Good day, everyone. Hello, hello. So organizations specialize in cooking up products and services to meet the needs of their stakeholders, their customers, and their clients. Lately, there's a whole lot of cooking up around the DEI space, but is your DEI program missing a key ingredient? Hmm. Let's talk about it today on the Coffee with Rhonda show, where we are going to get ready to lead above the grind. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Rhonda show. We're super excited. Great to be here with all of you and to be back for another episode. So we are your cup of inspiration, revelation, and wit for today's Savvy Leader. And we are in season six, and this is episode 76. That means that after today's show, there is only two more episodes before we go on a long winter's nap. No, <laughs> we go on our spring break where we'll be off and we'll return in September. So we got two more shows before we do that. So before we get started today on the show, we're going to talk a little bit more about diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging and why we need to keep having this conversation. And uh, and we, our special guest is going to really join us in that discussion, empowering that discussion today. Before we go any further, you know I ask things of you all the time. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to like and share this video. Share it with someone else. There's someone out there who's going to want to hear this conversation. I also want you to, if you have not already subscribed to our YouTube page, it's super easy, coffeewithrondashow.com, and we would love for you to become a part of our family. And so as we're getting prepared and getting ready to get started, I want to share with all of you that I am super excited because this week um, we held another um, one of our group mastermind coachings with our Leadership Academy. So uh, as your host for the show, Rhonda Y. Williams, one of the things I do is I work with leaders and organizations to develop elite leaders at every level. And it has just been my joy and my passion to work with this group of leaders I'm working with as they grow and develop and expand into the greatness that they all have within them. So super excited about that. If you want to learn more about what we do at the Leadership Above the Grind Mentoring and Coaching Academy, you can visit EliteMentorCoachingAcademy.com, EliteMentorCoachingAcademy.com. All right, that's enough about me and what's happening in my world. And I have my cup, I have my coffee with Rhonda cup. And in my cup today, I actually was on my game enough this morning to get out to Starbucks and get me a caramel macchiato. And so that's what is in my cup today. I'm, I'm kind of fancy today. So that's what's happening with me. Let's get to our co-host, Ms. Raj Jones. Hello to you. Welcome back. We missed you last week. Tell us a little bit about you and what you have in your cup. I'm Raj Jones. If y'all don't know who I am, I don't know what's wrong with you. But anyway, I'm the CEO <laughs> and owner of Jacksonville's Best Caregivers. And I'm at work. Y'all see I have my little beanie on, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be better. Uh, owner, CEO and owner of Jacksonville's Best Caregivers, where we help expand the life of your loved one. Why do I do it? I do it to help the caregiver to reduce that SOS on their journey, which is being stressed, overwhelmed, and providing safety and security. When you can't do it all, give us a call. My cup is on the table. I'm going to go get it while you introduce the next person, but it does have tea and lemon in it, peppermint tea, but I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Don't take me off camera, Rhonda. Don't take me off camera. Oh, here. I'll take you off. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> She's back. 
<laughs> it's back. Gotta love it. Hi, Marae. Good evening to you. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. This is Marae, the greatness engineer with you today. And uh, like Rose, I'm going to tell you, if you don't know me by now, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so I'm the CEO of the Empty Energy Resources, and I'm all about greatness. Uh, and I help you to identify your greatness, unleash your power, and, and really go for, you know, for it because your greatness is unlimited and I help you to uh, get the best result, becoming the best version of yourself. So in my cup today, it looks like I'm copying rose because I have lemon tea as well. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Murray. And I'm super excited to introduce our special guest joining us today, Miss Vivian. Welcome to the coffee table. We're so happy to have you. Tell us a little bit about you and then tell us what you have in your cup. First of all, ladies, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Vivian Aqua and I call myself the inclusive workplace wellness advocate. And what I do is basically putting fires out relating to DEI. The thing that I want to do is prevent these fires from happening, but hey, my, my aqua is in my name, which literally means water, and that's what I do with Amplify DEI with Viva La Vive, and of course, my cup, water. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got, you've got a whole water theme, a whole water mm -hmm. theme going on. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us. Super happy to have you here. I want to say good morning to a few folks. Mom is out there. Good morning, Mom. Is this the last show of the season or do we get one more? We get two more after this show today. So uh, great to have you here uh, waiting this morning with cold pineapple juice in my cup mm. and maraschino cherries. Oh, my gosh. My mom always has the best stuff in her cup. I don't even know how she comes up with those combinations, but they're always <laughs> amazing. Uh, my sister's out there. Hello, Regina from New Jersey. Has water in her cup. Whole family affair. Gotta love it. Melvin's out there. Hello, bro. Great to see you also. Um, and uh, all right, so that's enough. So let's get started. So what I want to do today is I want to start by asking this question. Why do we continue to uh, why do we need to continue to keep D, E, I, and B in our conversation, in our vocabulary, at the forefront of everything that we're doing in organizations? And I want to share um, something with all of you and then get you to react as you expand on why we need to continue having this conversation. As I was looking at, at this um, and I was asking myself, Gosh, it feels like we've been talking about diversity, equity, inclusion for such a long time. Here's what I see. 78% uh, of employees who responded to a um, Harvard Business Review study said that they work at organizations that lack diversity in leadership positions. Higher representation of women in the C-suite level results in 34% greater returns so when women, when we are at those uh, levels in varying um, quantities and, and sizes and different uh, diverse groups, it actually impacts the bottom line. And the majority of women in the workforce feel excluded from decision making. There was a lot more to this one, but it said that they felt excluded. Women feel like they don't have a voice and that speaking up could help, uh, could hinder their career. So as you all look at this, I want to get you each to react to why we're still talking about something that feels like it should be the most natural thing in the world. And, um, and so we definitely want to start that conversation. Um, Vivian, start it off for us, and then I'm going to come to Marae and Roz and have them add uh, as well. Thank you for uh, sharing this. And um, we have to start somewhere when it comes to raising an awareness, especially with, you know, everything that has happened last week, but also last year and also the beginning of the pandemic, where exclusion is more at the forefront, where exclusion is being highlighted and realizing that people are walking away from companies that don't have these ingredients, these necessary ingredients within the company. So as a company, as a leader, you need to ask yourself, where do you want to be within five years? Because if you want to activate or amplify exclusion, then be my guest. Do what you're doing now. You'll be you'll become a dinosaur. And we all know what happened to dinosaurs, right? They become extinct. Mm -hmm. Well, and 
we've got lots of examples of that in our history. We can look at organizations um, that stayed stagnant and mm -hmm. became extinct, right? Yeah. Um, we have no care. I don't know how many people know this, but years ago, Kodak was one of the very first companies on the forefront of the digital revolution. But they were so, they thought their money was tied to film. And so they purchased all these patents, they did all this stuff, but they held on to it. And they said, no, we're going to stay with the moneymaker. And what happened? Fast forward some years, they end up filing for bankruptcy. So stagnation is not a recipe for a success. So um, Ross, contribute and build on what uh, Vivian started with us around why it's important that we continue having this conversation. The numbers speak for themselves. It says when you have women involved, productivity goes up. So my question is, then why won't you make the change? You don't have to make the change. We all have choices. We all have options. But, it, you know, in, in, in Florida, we always say, well, you know, we need a recount. We don't need a recount on those numbers because <laughs> <laughs> the numbers speak for themselves. They speak for themselves all the time. And so, uh, again, I don't know. I don't know why we have to continue to have this conversation when you see when you put a woman in the mix it's, it's it changes just like when you put cream in a coffee there's a change it's a good change you understand what i'm saying so um i think i think some of the old i want to say the old re regime the old mentality a lot of that went out the wayside because of covid it's all not gone however you saw probably more women business old owners open up businesses during covid you know uh, the, the financial impact to, you know, to the economy has grown because of women, because we did enter the workforce or we decided to work from home, but wherever we decided from, we made an impact. These conversations that we're having now, people may think, oh, they're small and they don't make a difference. They do make a difference because who's ever listening is going to share it and whoever comes back in the replay is going to share it. So the conversations have to continue so that we can eradicate some of those bad behaviors and thoughts and patterns. Oh, what's that thing? Well, I want one. She what got a she thumbs got? up for you. Me? She is giving you the thumbs up and the high five and all of that. I love how Vivian does that. When I had the oh, opportunity to be on her shows, I, I love that, Vivian. I, I think that's awesome. Um, so thank you, uh, Roz. No, I agree. These are these are numbers that don't need a recount. Murray, what are your thoughts around why we need to continue this conversation? I mean, we, we need to continue the conversation because the world is evolving. The world is evolving. The complexity is, we have more complexity. So we need to look at things from a different angle. And you can't, you know, you, you can't actually cap everything if you only had one experience or you from just one culture or you've been, you've been, you know, um, staying around the same people you need a group of people different people that comes in and uh, i personally had the experience it's not a, you know about uh, the gender i had you know my first uh, company that i worked for all the manager were coming from the same uh, universities and uh, you could see that everybody that was going up where you know they were coming from the same university so things were not evolving and at some point uh, we, we could see from the result that uh, we were not doing well because they were all thinking the same way. Mm. So you need this, you know, um, this difference and 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 this, uh, you know, uh, um, diversity of thought and uh, diversity of experience, diversity, cultural diversity, so that you can have something powerful. And the numbers are. are, are even you know um are also telling the story when we look at uh, when you bring uh, more people from diverse background from different you know uh, who have different experiences or even people from different age because you know we learn from our young counterpart as well there are things that we don't see that they can bring and then it can actually help us to uh, deliver something that is that is amazing as far as you know the corporate world is concerned. 
So you mean we need to be we need to be thinking more about uh, between the genders. I hear mm -hmm. typically I hear complaints about, oh, my gosh, that this generation and that generation and they don't mm -hmm. work like we do. They don't work as hard as we do. They don't you know, they don't have the same work ethic as we do. But what mm -hmm. you just said, Marie, is that there is a ton of value mm -hmm. that is brought into play when mm -hmm. we are honoring and respecting those differences. Let me just say this. Maybe they don't need to work like we did. Exactly. Right. I, I I decided that, you know, when I look back, I thought, oh, I don't I don't want to I didn't want to do that what was done back then. So why should we expect them to do? I don't want to get off on a tangent about that, but I think I thought that and, and especially, you know, the context is completely different. They have all this information coming to them. So they probably don't need to work as hard as we used to work because we didn't have anything so we really have first to do the research and then you know use you know uh, try to find the right data but it's coming to them just you know on on you know on the spot so they they definitely have an advantage and so we we have to respect that absolutely and they have more options they have yes. more options and mm -hmm. we the, the option that they have now we didn't have we used to be yes. you know it used to be we had to work 20 years on a job if they mm -hmm. work anywhere from one to three years that's that's longevity for them you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so they're not locked into loyalty like we mm -hmm. used to be you know for mm -hmm. those 20 25 years now that's a dinosaur you know that's yeah. that's really out the window so i wanted to put mm -hmm. that in there is that they know they have options and also realizing that nowadays companies don't you know it's not a one one time thing that you, the relationship is only one sided you need mm -hmm. to dance you need to whatever dance you want to do the bachata or the waltz or whatever you know fills your cup it's a two way street whereas you as a company you as a manager you have to dance the dance as well and if you're not an inclusive dancer then they they will party elsewhere where they mm -hmm. are dancing inclusively right Absolutely. Uh, let's say good morning. Good morning, Christopher. Christopher was on the show uh, two episodes ago, I think it was. Christopher, great to see you. And he also said the only thing that's 100% proven to positively change and impact the community is the empowerment of Come women. Come on now. Come Absolutely. on now. Yes. Thank you so much, Christopher. Absolutely. <laughs> Stacey's out there and says, good morning, lazy. Uh, lady, lazy. <laughs> good morning, lazy. We're not lazy. <laughs> Good morning, ladies, and hello, Raj Jones. Good Lord, that was crazy. <laughs> so, so let's move into uh, Vivian. I want to talk about one of the things that you say is that um, mm -hmm. I love your whole analogy to cooking and cooking up with DEI. So, as I opened, I talked about organizations are cooking up a lot in the DEI space. So, mm -hmm. I do want to acknowledge that, right? There are organizations out there that are bringing in more diversity leaders because they recognize they need to do something differently. And I think we should celebrate them for that. You say, as they're cooking up all of these different things in the kitchen around DEI, if they're not careful, they might be missing something. So let me share your graphic and talk a little bit about, and then we'll all get to, uh, I want to take these one at a time, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to break those down, but here's what you yeah. say they might be missing. a robust discussion around this. Oh, so we also have someone out there on Facebook that says, good morning. For some reason, your name's not showing for me, but it's uh, Stephanie. Again. Oh, it's Stephanie again. Hi, Stephanie. Again. Great to see you. Thank <laughs> you so much for tuning in. Always wonderful to see you. Um, and I know that you have mm -hmm. a lot to contribute in this space in this conversation. So let's talk about allyship first, right? Mm -hmm. Let's start there. As we think about allyship in an organization, what does that look like, right? What what does it mean to be a good ally? And um, Marae, let me start with you on this one. What does it mean to be a good ally? Ooh. Uh, a good a good ally is 
is uh, somebody that can you know accompany you in your you know in your journey i mean that's the way i see it so somebody who understand that you can actually talk to you you can exchange ideas and they can help you as you you know um select you know a journey or something that you want to do they accompany you through that whatever you know whatever challenges whatever opportunity they're always there to uh, to make sure that you get, you know, to to reach your goal. That's the way I see an ally. An ally. Yeah. So, and and how important, have y'all ever been in a space where you felt like you didn't have someone that had your back? Oh, that you yeah. didn't have someone? And if you're out there in the audience, type it in, like share with us. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like, oh my goodness, I need, I need someone here helping me and supporting me. So Vivian, what is an ally? And then Roz, I want to uh, ask you to share um, your thoughts around this as well. So Vivian, talk to us a little bit about um, what, what that allyship looks like. Well, you have different phases of being an ally, right? And a lot of people presume that everybody who, who think that they are an ally should advocate or demonstrate outside and should stand in front of the in front of the government or stand in front of the companies and activate cancel cancel out but then again an ally is somebody who has a listening ear an ally is somebody who can speak up when somebody is over speaking you or somebody is um is ignoring you in important meetings or somebody hijacking your idea instead of this person waiting upon after the meeting saying are you okay this person can advocate during this meeting and say, I thought Vivian said this idea, or let's hear what Vivian has to say so that we hear everybody's idea out, right? That's what an ally should be. And we aren't really informed in a workplace about what we can do. Instead of waiting upon what companies are doing or waiting upon what managers are doing, how about we look ourselves in the mirror and, and ask ourselves this question, what can I do to be a supporter for somebody else that doesn't have the same superpowers or, or AKA privileges as I do? Mm, I love that. And Roz, it's, it's so often we think of, well, my manager is the ally. Well, they should be the one speaking up. It's not my job to speak up. This person doesn't report to me. And while meanwhile, we're all there hearing and experiencing that person who is being overlooked or overtalked or their voice is not being recognized. So, Roz, you know, as you think about allyship, what does that look like for you? And in your world, right, your situation is a little bit different. And how does ally look in your world? To me, I, I agree with everybody else has already said about an ally. To me, an ally is opposite of you. An ally is opposite of you. And, and the reason why I say that is because you don't want your ally always to have the same uh, vision and view. You want them to have a different view of, of what you have. But then you also, too, want an ally that when you, in the background, they can say, hey, you know, you need to tighten up. That's a good ally. They're not mm -hmm. always a yes person. They're not always, you know, yeah, I'm gonna I'm take care of you in the front, but in the back, hey, we need to we need to clean up some things. So it's a person that's all yeah that that will speak up for you, that will make sure that things are done correctly. They have your vision, they understand your vision, but they also understand the areas where you are weak and will help you grow in that area. I want I want to make that clear mm -hmm. that you know you want you want an ally that's gonna help you keep going forward and not go backwards. So that's Ross Jones version. Of an, ally. <laughs> of an ally and hey Raj Jones version is the most important version right so let's go I saw a comment here uh, mom said these days if our resume may says I worked there for 25 or 30 years instead of looking at it as a plus they might want to know what's wrong with you <laughs> can you get another job yeah you know that that lent anymore and something really important about that is does it serve you in the same way that it did in the past? So why did we stay with companies for 25 or 30 years in the past? Because we needed this sense of, secure, of security mm -hmm. and stability for our family and everything else. Today, it's about experience, right? And broadening your knowledge and your awareness and and um, and that sort of thing. So it's a little bit different, right? Times have changed um, just a bit around that. So let's do, um, Roger, you want to add? Yeah, I also want to say too, the years was like a track record. You know, mm -hmm. it, it 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 proved that you were consistent. It proved that you were loyal. 
They didn't think about experience. They just looked at the time that you stayed. Now mm -hmm. experience is more important than how many years because you could have more experience sometimes than someone with 25 years who, who's been there for 25 years. So I just want to put that out mm -hmm. there. That's 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 the difference now. It is a difference. No, a really important one. Let's mm -hmm. do the caregiver card chronicles. And when we talk about when we come back, we're going to transition a little bit to um, like, what can I do? I want to take just a couple of points on what can we do to be better allies, right, in the workplace. If our role as an ally is to um, to amplify, right, and and Vivian, you have this in your um, and amplify DEI, right? Amplify someone else's message, their voice, really support them, bring them, basically connecting your power to theirs right? So that together, then you have the opportunity to lift that person. So let's talk about that more. There's a couple points around what can we do to be better allies? And then we'll move into the second one. A uh, second ingredient might be missing is mentorship. So let's do the caregiver car, car chronicles first. <laughs> I'm the CEO and owner of Jacksonville's Best Caregivers and coming to you with another episode of the Caregiver Car Chronicles. Sometimes we think that in order to distress, we have to take a long break or a vacation. And sometimes it only takes a few minutes to take and adjust and realign our body and our mind. So five minute breaks can help reduce stress and also help you think clearly. So when you have that power pack schedule and you see that you have five minutes, these are a couple of things that you can do to help you focus and reset. Number one, drinking water. Number two, just taking some deep breaths. Number three, going for a walk. Number four, meditating. And number five, I can't remember listening to music. So I'm Roz Jones with another episode of the Caregiver Car Chronicles. I love that because to me, that's a bit of self-advocacy. Right. That is how you advocate for yourself as you are advocating for others um, as well. So thank you, Roz, for your message in uh, this week's Caregiver Card Chronicles. So let's talk about what can we do. And I saw a message come in, a comment. Uh, Stephanie said, I believe a good ally will stand with us publicly and lovingly helps us to correct course in private. Absolutely, Stephanie. So there's the whole distinction between public and private. So what can we do? So let's just do a quick round robin and each person sort of give one thing. What can we do to be better allies, to amplify others' messages and really to support other people who might be feeling marginalized, misunderstood, unheard and undervalued? So um, let's start with you, Marae. Uh, what would you what would be one suggestion that you have to be a better ally? One suggestion is to to listen to the person so that you understand where this person wants to be and what they're trying to achieve. Because I think sometimes we don't listen enough. We only look at the result or we look at how the person comes across, but we don't try to understand why, you know, these things happen. So it's important to listen and also ask questions, you know, to understand exactly where they, you know, where they want to be and how you can help them because you, uh, it has to be very strategic. Absolutely. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Marae. Uh, Roz, what about you? What What's one thing someone can do to be a better ally? Marie took both of mine. She was only <laughs> supposed to do one, and she did two. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, I'll come back to you. I'll give you a minute, because now you got to think of a new one. No, no, no. I'll go. No. Okay. No, no. I'll go ahead and go. But I'm a, uh, but she took, I just want to know she took both of mine. But anyway, a good ally will make sure that you have a strategy, you, mm -hmm. that, that you always have a plan, a strategy. Ooh. See, Mar I did one. <laughs> I love that. Hilarious. You guys are so funny. Vivian. <laughs> okay, let me let me be an ally for both ladies and connect my points with theirs. So <laughs> given the fact that Ross shared something about mental well-being, I do want to address that being becoming an ally means also checking in with yourself. So Phil, first check if your cup is half full first. 
Because if you're doing activities with a half empty cup, then you're going to drain out before even starting the, the role of becoming an ally. And then this, this other person will see you in a different light and say, hey, but you're not being an authentic ally. So that's the one. That's to support Roth. On the second hand, Mireya mentioned something about having a strategy and listening to somebody else. I want to tie into asking the right question. Because mm -hmm. if you want to become an ally or for somebody else, ask them, what do you need? How can I help you? And how can I use that superpowers and be authentic? Because if you're doing it just for the like, there's Instagram, go and find your ally, your, your performative allyship there because it's not working. People can see through you. So that's my way of being an, an active ally for both these ladies as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, Vivian. And, and we've got a couple good comments that I want to get to um, here as we think. Of, but you just mentioned performative um, mm -hmm. allyship. And I am starting to hijack that word. And I am beginning to use it in terms of performative leadership. Yeah. Right. Because um, there. So performative means you're just doing it on the surface. You're just checking the box. But there's really no depth. There's no substance. Here's what performative looks like. It is it just as you said, Vivian, it's a like on Facebook or this or that. Or it's like, OK, cool. Amplification. Right. If there is a message that you really resonate with, are you amplifying it? Are you sharing it to your network? Are you typing more than a two word comment to somebody that says, yeah, way to go? Are you adding depth? Right. Are you truly contributing? That is what I think of in terms of allyship. So um, let me go to um, Joe mm -hmm. Beth's comment because this is really good. Shortly after the murder of George Floyd, I sent an email to my employees to share my emotional response to what we witnessed as well as offer my support and open that door. So many staff responded to me expressing their appreciation, but also shared their experiences within and outside the workplace. I reached out to executive leadership and provided feedback that we must vocalize acknowledgement and support, creating a safe place to share and contribute to a culture, to a changing culture. Love that. Absolutely love that. Roz, were you going to, um, oh, okay. I thought you were going to add something. No, 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 no. I would just, I would just, I would just like, uh, it only takes one person. Mm, it only yeah. takes a moment to change. And she took that moment and decided I'm going to be the change agent. It only takes a moment to change something. You know, I said, everybody's life can change between Sunday to Sunday. It's up to us. And she made that decision. She ha she could have sat back. She could have sat back and said, I'm going to keep my arms closed and keep my mouth closed. But she said no. And that mm -hmm. I just I just want to give her her flowers for, for stepping forward. Yeah. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Amazing move. And then Stacy also said, we can utilize the whistleblower programs when they are in the workplace. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Organizations have to have processes and mechanisms for people to speak up. But I'm going to derail us for a moment here because I think something really important just came up. And that is what Joe Beth said about opening the door. So last week we had this horrific incident happen in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, there are not very many workplaces asking people how you're doing. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? What's happening? Because they don't know what to do with it. So they don't want to know. They don't want to ask the questions because they're fearful of their response. What if, as a leader, my I fix things, right? I, I am in this problem solving mode. What if you bring me something or say something I can't fix? You don't need to fix it. But to create the space and opportunity for people. So I just want to do that right here for all of you. That incident happened in Buffalo, right? So let's um, lead by example and create the space here for people to be able to say, how are you feeling about that situation that happened in Buffalo? You know, after the George Floyd thing, we did a whole show on that. In fact, we did two. Some of our most powerful episodes came after that event. And honestly, I didn't want to do it. Full transparency. I was like, I don't, first of all, I don't know if I can get through it without getting emotional. And then, um, and then I was just like, is it the right thing for this show? But we did it. And I was so glad that we did, which gave me a sense of responsibility around when these events happen, 
we need to create that space. So I just want to take a moment. I don't know if anybody wants to say anything about that Buffalo situation, but I want to take a moment and give space in case anybody does want to speak about that horrific incident in Buffalo. And if you're I, out there in audience, please comment. Feel free to share your thoughts as well. I do want to share something because before we started, I was telling you that um, what happened in Buffalo really touched me. Even though I am based in the Netherlands, it still hurts me because I see a black brother or somebody else, a father, a mother, a parent losing their life because somebody felt it was needed to do that, right? And also being in the forefront where you can see when white people are shooting and doing a mass shooting, they end up be, be, being in jail. When black people do something and they haven't even done something worse, they are being killed just out of nothing. And that's something that we need to put in perspective. When do we matter? When do we matter? Yeah. Thank you, Vivian, um, for sharing that. And I want to just give space for Roz and Marie. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything? I mean, we, we had the same um, event. It was in New Zealand, actually. This uh, Australian, actually, was started to kill Muslim in, in New Zealand. And it, it actually was uh, live stream on Facebook. And mm -hmm. so it, it's important that we talk about it. And, and, and I really appreciate the way the New, Ze New Zealand um, uh, Prime Minister approached the thing, giving the space to talk about it and to get people to really make peace with, with what's happening, you know, and, uh, and, and, and also make sure that the person that did it actually get punished because if it if you if you don't actually you know uh, put a punishment and and it, it's just going to happen again and if you don't talk about it you stay silent the awareness is not there so another person is going to say oh, okay i'm i'm just going to do it and and that's it so we really need to it needs to be you know talked about everywhere you know on tv at school and everywhere so that the awareness is there and, uh, and also the people who actually are in the community of the perpetrator can actually do something because I think they have the responsibility to do something. They have to be involved in this process because mm -hmm. if they're not involved, it's just you know, the, the victim, nothing is gonna happen. It's gonna happen again. So right. they, there's, you know, um, th there's an opportunity here to make sure that the people that are part of those community where those uh, shooter are originated have to be involved and find a solution as well. Because yeah. if we don't do that, it's, you know, it's just going to continue. That's it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's a sad day when you can't go to the grocery store, um, right? I, I mean, you're just going for groceries. And, um, and you never make it home. Think about that for a moment. So um, thank you um, for speaking and sharing your thoughts on that. And um, just wanted to give that space. Roz, did you want to add anything? I want to, I want to say this. I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about it because again, every conversation brings awareness. Every conversation brings education. Um, recently here in Florida, they had an email that went out um, telling nurses, CNAs, not to wear your uniforms when you were going into, into stores because people were being attacked. Mm -hmm. So what went on because of, you know, what I was wearing or what I look like, I'm a lot of times I'm very fearful when I go out, even though nothing has happened recently, I still keep an extra set of clothes in the car. You know, I, I, I've, I've taken extra precautions, but I should not, I should not be, sometimes I feel like I'm an animal in a cage because, okay, before I go somewhere, I have to put my purse in a, in a certain place in the car. I have to take my uniform top off and put on a jacket so it doesn't look like I'm a, a nurse. You, you know, I have to take my clogs off and put on tennis shoes. These are some of the things that I've started doing because to protect myself, to protect myself, you know. So I understand that it, it is bothersome it's an extra stress on me. It's an extra stress on my employees. I tell them, hey, if y'all can go home and change your clothes or bring an extra set of clothes in the car, a top or a blouse or a sweatshirt or whatever, you know. Oh, so 
when that happened last week, I know how, I, I knew how it felt because I go to the store often for clients and I have to, and now I, I change before I go in. And that was yeah. before this incident. <clears throat> yeah. Where are we as a society when you have to change your clothes because someone who is not able to manage their own emotional state, right. And, and feel empowered to take another life or to attack someone else because you have differing views, beliefs, whatever it is. Right. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get us back on track now. So thank you all for just engaging in that conversation for a minute, because I didn't want to um, miss the opportunity for us all to be able to express that. We'll transition by going into the greatness minute. And then on the other side, I want to talk about inclusive leadership because I want to make sure we get that one in and what it means to be an inclusive leader. And by the way, I'm talking to every single one of you out there. I am not talking about someone who has the title of a leader. I'm talking about every single one of us. We are all leaders in our own right. And so um, I think it's really important to do that. Before we do that, um, there's two comments. Um, Regina said, I'll come alongside of Vivian, be, be available, authentic, and befriend the person. Be transparent and real with the people who need this extra support. Absolutely, Regina. Authenticity is really important in being a good, strong ally. And Christopher said, it takes a lot to switch on my fury and disgust. And these situations are so totally nightmarish. Christopher, I, you are so right. There's not really a good way to describe them other than it's a nightmare to, not, to think that you could not come home from something as basic as shopping for groceries, going to your car, or something of that nature. Um, and Christopher said, I love by example, the most I can give. Oh, love that, Christopher. I love by example. So let's go do our greatness minute. And when we come back, we're going to talk about inclusive leadership. This is Mariah, the Greatness Engineer, with you today. Welcome to the Greatness Minute. Today, I want to introduce to you the DARE method, which is the method that the Greatness Engineering is based on. The first decide that you want to be great. So that's the D in the DARE method. Then you have to put in place, obviously, a plan and act on this plan. That's the A in the, in the DARE method. After you've acted, there is a result. It can be a good result or a bad result. If it's a bad result, you need to identify what went wrong, identify the gap, bring the right resources to rectify everything that went wrong. And, uh, and then, you know, expand when, when you've, you've, you've actually uh, review everything, you have to expand and get you know to the next level don't stop at your at the first success greatness is a succession of success and it never stops because you know you're learning and and the greatness engineering process it's an unlimited process so make sure you understand that you have to decide to to be great you have to put a plan in place and act on this plan. You have to review this plan. And when you are okay and where you are, you have to expand because the expansion, it's what brings you to the next level of your greatness. Thank you very much for being with us today. I see you next week. Awesome. Thank you so much for that dare, sharing your dare method with us, Marae. Absolutely love that. And I want now for us to to dare to be great, inclusive leaders, right? In everything that we do, we should dare to do this. I love that acronym. Um, Mom said, another reason it's important to voice this problem is so that those people realize that not everyone has these hate issues, right? That there are still many truly good people in the US and in the world. And it is important because it feels, it's so heavy when it happens, it, it it causes you to feel like, oh my gosh, everyone is blah, 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 but not everyone is, right? So it's important for us to keep and maintain contact. And then Vivian, you said these conversations are very real. Yeah, it felt a little heavy for a moment. And so I want to thank everyone for hanging in there with us because at the end of the day, leading yourself and others can be a heavy burden to carry, right? It's not always easy and it's not always sunshine and puppy dog tails. Uh, which we'll get to in a minute. So let's talk a little bit about inclusive leadership and what that looks like. And I want to give you each a chance to share your thoughts on 
how do you become an inclusive leader? You know, what does that look like in the day to day and the practical world? So, Vivian, let's start with you. What do you think um, about being an inclusive leader? Um, the most essential ingredient that an inclusive leader needs to have is to unlock empathy. They need to have empathy. And if that is not available, there are ways to unlock that. So to give you an example of how I'm currently using that is by um, providing a space where people can literally walk in my shoes through virtual reality. So they can become you. So they can become somebody else. They can become a person with a neurodiverse background to literally understand the challenges that we face, to see all the different isms. And I know it only takes about five minutes, but then again, you're living in my world for five minutes where you're walking through a minefield. I don't know what kind of day it will be, but I'll, I definitely know that there are some days that it feels like you're walking on a minefield where you have to walk on eggshells and be careful where you land your foot. Wow. So you're doing virtual reality mm -hmm. um, kind of that's super powerful. And yeah. um, I can only imagine the impact mm -hmm. that that can have on someone else um, to be able to step into that day, that five minutes, whatever it is, not knowing what's going to happen in that moment is, is very cool. Thank you um, for, for that, because that is definitely a way to bring others and include them in your world so they can experience that. Marae, what about you? Uh, what do you think about, um, what's something that we can do to be inclusive and in how mm -hmm. we The first thing is, uh, and I uh, join uh, Vivian here, is to create a safe space where people can express themselves, where they can be themselves without being judged. Because I think w what's going on is that uh, a lot of people are fearful because they're afraid of being judged, and 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 that's why that's why they don't talk or they they don't feel included, and and it becomes a problem. So that's that's really the first thing to do. And what I've 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 done, and uh, I've done it as well with my my children actually, is to when you know um, a situation occur and you know they are frustrated or they 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 don't know what to do, I actually ask them to uh, you know if you know you were me, how would you you know solve this problem if you had you know all the power that I had if you are my you know you are my my mom and then just give me some option. And then when those options are on the table, then we can look at it and and uh, and 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 really expand them because then they feel empowered. It's not coming from you; it's coming from them. But you're just helping mm -hmm. them to go to the next level and and get to a, a, a solution. So I think that's something that as you know I, I always do with my children, but I also done it as well as a leader with uh, people in my team as well when when they get you know complete. They don't, they don't know what to do. So I think that's a Ooh. good method to, to use as well. I love that. I Basically love that. get them to come with the solution, but, you know, uh, not asking them the question, mm -hmm. but creating this process and this uh, uh, helping them to really own, you know, uh, the process. And then and then you, you, you see fantastic things coming out of it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Murray. That is mm -hmm. that is fantastic really including their voice, right? It's an, mm -hmm. Again, it's a way of amplifying their voice, their diversity of thought, because they think mm -hmm. different than you. And exactly. by asking them, then you're pulling that in. Roz, what about you as, as a lead? Like, how do we show up and what can you do to become a more inclusive leader? For mm -hmm. me, with, with my staff, what I do is I go in and talk to them, have a one-on-one. -on -one. But what I do is I leave my cell phone. I say this for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's because then there's no distractions. I don't mm -hmm. have to say I got to take a call or anything. I'm letting them know that at that moment, you are the most important to me. Mm -hmm. What's going on with you, how you feel about work. And so when I take that cell phone and leave it and talk to them or turn it off or whatever the case may be for that 30 minutes or 15, whatever it is, they know that they, they have that one-on-one -on -one time with me. What is it that you need? What's going on? How is it going? 
And if there's like, I just, hey, let's just do kicks and giggles, then we can do kicks and giggles. If they want to, you know, talk about something else, then we can talk about something else. But, you know, showing them that when you, that, that they are important and that their opinion counts and that they are a stakeholder, then you get more productivity. Mm -hmm. But, but if they're just a to do a, a item on a to do list and you're looking at your phone, you don't get that respect. They won't respect you. So I just wanted to put that out there as a solution mm -hmm. to help. Yeah, no, really good. And uh, uh, valuing them and really showing them the value. It's one thing to say you're important, but it's another thing to show it. Everyone knows how important everyone's cell phone is. So the fact that you're going to leave it and just give me FaceTime with you, I think is really valuable. Um, thank you all for sharing that. Regina said, Marae, I love the DARE method. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, Stephanie says, I think it's important for leaders to have boundaries set up when it comes to inclusion. Yes, let's have an open door policy, but also know when to close the door so that we have time to refill our own cup so that we're not serving from an empty cup. Absolutely. Um, you can't really serve anyone from that empty cup, although we try to do it all the time. Right. And, and what happens, what comes out is probably not nearly as good as what could be if you were coming from that place of fullness and abundance. So you should not be serving others at the expense of serving yourself. Vivian? I also wanted to highlight something that you shared in the beginning, right? Inclusive leadership. It's also about leading thyself. So what I say, inclusive self-leadership, right? And leaders sometimes feel alone in this, in this journey where they want to do their best, but aren't getting that engagement from the other side. So I want you to activate empathy, activate your growth mindset. When you see your leader at least trying their best, help them out as well. Dance that dance with them as well. And if they need any tips on dancing, ask, you know, share your tips, share your feedback so that they can become a better inclusive leader or dancer in that way. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much that we can do, right? Just ourselves. Um, there's that quote that says one person can do so much, right? We are all powerful beyond our, even our own awareness. And when we make decisions, when we choose to act, then the impact is incredible. Um, Stephanie said, by the way, Vivian, your hair is dope. Love the vibe. My two favorite colors. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So let's do our top two. Our top two question of the day is going to be your top two favorite animals or your top two cutest animals, whatever that might be. So your favorite animals, your cutest animals. Let's do those top two when we come back from this. All right, who wants to start sharing your top two favorite animals or cutest animals? Either one. Yes. My favorite animal is, it has to be um, a lion or at least oh. a lioness. I feel Ooh. like I'm a lioness in the workplace as well. And the second animal that I really love is the giraffe. I am tall. A lot of people don't realize that sitting be me sitting behind this desk that I'm small, but I will look my length up because I'm six foot plus. I don't know how to transfer it back to the U.S. metrics, but I'll look it up and uh, share it uh, again. OK, awesome. Thank you, giraffe and a lion <laughs> or a lioness. Awesome. What about you, Marae? What are your two favorite or two cutest animals? So I like small dogs. So the poodle is, uh, the, you know, the, the, my first, you know, animal. But I also like, um, uh, you know, the tiger, but the black tiger. Um, I, I happened to actually when I was working, you know, uh, still, you know, in the drilling in the in the rainforest in, in, in Gabon to meet one of them at night. So beautiful, very uh, black, very lighting black, but obviously. So you don't want to get close, but very beautiful animal, actually. And you did it at night. Wow. <laughs> You're very. Brave. I was actually going on the rig side and it's, you know, it's rainforest and this animal was just passing by. So what you do, you switch off the light and you just leave it, leave it go. And mm. you could see very big, but 
you know, the, the black, you know, uh, uh, was just so beautiful and you could, wow. you know, see, but I had not to move because otherwise I would have been attacked and, you know, the car <laughs> and everything. He would have turned into dinner. <laughs> so it was didn't see me and then just just went through. But that's when I went, wow, it's such a beautiful animal. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any comments come up in yet. So for you out there, what are your favorite two animals or your cutest animals? Roz, what about you? What's your favorite animal? Well, one of mine is not an animal. I like the caterpillar because of the process it has to go through. Ooh. So it reminds me of the processes and things that I have to do to change, to evolve and go to my next, you know, so sometimes it's just, you know, it's, it's a, it's a friendly reminder of what we have to go through and how we have to be patient, how we have to Ooh. be patient. And then my, uh, my other one is the, the lion, the lion, because I like the fur around the head. I like all that fur. And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm going to share. Um, I, I had a hard time with this one. I mean, I I like dogs, but I, I don't like everyone's dogs. So I thought, well, you can't use dogs then because you're you're a little bit biased against some dogs. <laughs> and so so I want to share um, what I was thinking about when I came up with this. So, all right, I'm going to share. All right, you guys take a look. If you haven't found your favorite cute little guy, Maybe you'll see him here. Look at this little guy. This is an Beautiful. otter. And then this little guy is a margay. Mm -hmm. And then we have this one. I think he's kind of adorable. <laughs> the panda, yeah. <laughs> the small panda. <laughs> the, red, the red panda. And look at this little guy. Look at his little nose. Where's that? All right. <laughs> this this he is a um an elephant shrew. Hmm. I okay. know, right? Who knew such a thing? Never seen a... that in my life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a quokka, a quokka, never heard of it. And one hmm. more is look at this little guy, a fennec fox. Hmm. All right. He so has those big ears. were those were some that I came up with as I was looking. So uh, Regina said jaguar and a uh, and a giraffe. giraffe. Mom said uh, most animals are very cute as babies. The lion, because when Jesus returns, it will be as the lion of Judah. All right mm -hmm. now. And then uh, Regina said, I love your choices of animals, Rhonda. All right. So Stephanie says, lately I've been into mythical creatures such as fairies and mermaids. Yeah, I'm a big kid. I love the magic. Listen, don't get me started on the whole big kid thing, okay? Because <laughs> I am a big kid. I, I am at every Marvel movie. Don't, don't even get me started. All right. So as we wrap up and in move into our final segment, uh, Joe Beth also had... Uh, Joe Beth, thank you so much for bringing us back to reality. We sort of digress there for a moment, which I actually kind of enjoy. So uh, leaders have to connect to their employees. Leaders have to be the, have the courage to be vulnerable, take ownership, acknowledge, recognize, celebrate, et cetera. I love to one to one with my employees. It provides them with the opportunity to not only receive feedback, but to give feedback, contributing to success of their job and the workplace. And they have buy in. Absolutely. All mm -hmm. right. So as we move uh, to wrap up, we're going to think about our final thoughts about this conversation. And everybody just think about what are you taking away from this discussion? It's been a little heavy at times, a little bit sort of here and there, but we've covered a lot of ground. So what did we pour into your cup today? As we like to say, before we do that, we're going to take our pictures with our cups. Hey, Mariah, we can see your cup today right there. Got it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. So as we come back, where I'm going to ask you each to share your thoughts, I'll start with Roz, go to Mariah, and then end with you, Vivian, and then be sure to share how others can learn more also about the work that you're doing and where they can connect with you. So we'll start our uh, final What's in Your Cup segment right after this. All right. So as we wrap up, what did
did we put in your cup today? So we will, uh, Ms. Roz, we will start with you. I have, I have a better understanding of what ally is. You know, uh, usually when I think about ally, I used to think about war, you know, the, the, the allies when it came to that, but now, uh, you know, ally can be used in the workplace. So I never thought about it like that. So that's, that's something I learned today and I'm gonna carry with me. Wonderful, thank you so much, Roz. Marae, what do we put in your cup today? So, so in my cup is uh, so the uh, create an open, you know, uh, safe and open space for, for you know, for and and allow in, to allow inclusion. But I think what I've learned today as well, uh, coming from Vivian, is that you have to fill your cup first before you can actually help. Uh, you know, uh, anybody and, and create this inclusion that you're looking for. So first thing, check on yourself and then, you know, uh, allow, you know, the process to, to go through. So I think that's, uh, that's the key for me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marae. And, uh, and Vivian, what are the final takeaways that you want to share with folks as they are leaving this conversation and then also share how people can connect and learn more about what you do? First of all, having this conversation is filling my cup. So this, you know, having constructive conversation, but also being able to talk about something that happened last week is very healing for my soul. That's, that's the first thing. So I would like to say thank you to all the ladies as well. And the second thing is uh, my heart broke when Ross was sharing her story about psychological safety, about not feeling safe in the clothes that she was wearing. And I realized that you know, DEI and belonging, it's not only happening in the workplace, it should also extend in our outside environments as well. And there's a lot that we need to do on that part as well. So we need to amplify, you know, the different recipes, but also realize that um, companies are, some companies are working in health kitchen and we need to change that as <laughs> soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Vivian, where can they learn more? Do you have a website yeah. or Yeah, um, definitely. So people can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Vivian Aqua, or you can find me on AmplifyDEI.com. The best way is LinkedIn because that's where I'm most uh, talkative on and uh, you can connect for me from there or on Twitter. So I would love to learn more about you as well and learn what your takeaways are from this conversation. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, I think my um, I think my takeaway from this conversation is about the fact that it really begins with each of us. Right. We cannot wait for anyone else to do it or take care of it. It starts with us where you are. You have a circle of influence. And so how are you intentionally creating that influence? Words matter. Listening matters. But silence also matters. So if you hear something that's inappropriate or that's hurtful to someone else and you are silent, that matters. That becomes confirmation just by the fact that no one spoke up or no one challenged them. So use your voice, be intentional, and be sure that you are the change you want to see in the world. Final comments from our audience. Ally is a key to acting on positive intention, being there not necessarily perfect all the time, but creating an alliance through authentic commitment. And Christopher, you have been an ally for me, and I am so thankful and grateful for your support and your allyship because you, my friend, are amazing. Um, he's He's got his coffee cup there. <laughs> Love that. Um, let's see, mom said the show was so good. Love Vivian's input and her beautiful, colorful hair. Roz's version of ally and Marae's there. Thank you so much for that, mom. I'm looking for... Um, Stephanie said, my takeaway is to give our allies a voice, yes, to lift others, to amplify, right? If you want to be performative, hit the like button and keep it moving. If you want to be an ally, you really got to go for it and amplify. Uh, Christopher said, rich, edifying show. Bravo all. Thank you so much. Regina said, always try to put yourself in the other person's shoes and offer up that much needed love and support. Remember yourself, as Marae said. Joe Beth says, I love hearing from like-minded people. It continues to motivate and support me to keep that door open, even when others may not. We are so thankful for your contribution, uh, Joe Beth. Really gave us a lot to think about here. Regina said, great show. 
And thank you all, ladies, said Joe Beth. All right, with that, we will end. If you are not a member of the Coffee with Rhonda Show tribe on Facebook, that's where we post our behind the scenes conversations like what happens after the show, right? That's where uh, you get to see that. So you can go to Facebook and join the Coffee with Rhonda Show tribe and learn about that there. Regina said, Vivian, your hair is so pretty. Love it, love it, love it. So for everyone out there, we are so thankful and grateful. We're going to go over and do our debrief now in our other room. For everyone else, thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad that you're here. We look forward to seeing you back here next week for another episode of the Coffee with Rhonda show. Enjoy your weekend, everyone.